Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Farzana Mashud. How are you doing, my dear students? Hope you all are doing well. Welcome to my English literature class. Today I am going to discuss a horror story named Amin and the Cold from Oversea. So, let's read the story and see what happens. Amin and the Cold. Long ago, a young man called Amin set out from a Persian city to get work. He was so poor that he only had two things to take on his journey. These were a raw egg and a lump of salt. He had nothing to defend himself with from any of the dangers of the road. He walked all day across a stony plain and just as it was beginning to get dark, the poor fellow could see an enormous ghoul coming towards him. A ghoul is a very unpleasant kind of demon. This one was very ugly and as tall as a tree. There was nothing to hide behind. So, Amin decided to walk straight on and try to look as bold as he could. Where are you going? shouted the ghoul in a nasty voice. And he put out an arm as thick as a tree trunk to stop Amin. Well, the fact is, answered Amin, I'm very strong and so I thought I would go out into the world to find a ghoul who is as strong as I am. Ha! <laughs> laughed the enormous ghoul. You don't look very strong. Perhaps not, said Amin. But then you look small for a girl. This answer annoyed the girl, for he was very proud of his strength and size. Nonsense, said he. How lucky that we met, went on Amin. Now we can see which of us is the stronger. Then before the girl could answer, Amin stooped and searching about, picked up a roundish white stone, held it to his ear and shook it. There's liquid inside this stone. I can hear it, he said as he handed the stone to the ghoul. While the ghoul was doing his best to crush the stone in his enormous hand, Amin managed without his noticing to get the egg out of his pocket. It's impossible, said the ghoul at last. His face was red from squeezing so hard. Impossible? It's easy, said Amin. Give it to me. Then there was a cracking noise in Amin's hand and the ghoul, peering down, could see that something was trickling down from between his fingers. The astonished ghoul couldn't understand it. Don't worry, said Amin. Even if you couldn't manage that, just try again. Once more, Amin stepped down to get a stone. He pretended to look carefully at it. This one is full of salt, said Amin. Just crumble it between your fingers. Again, the girl tried hard but found that he couldn't crush this stone either. While he was trying, Amin got the lump of salt from his pocket and hid it in his hand. How strange, said Amin at last. You can't do the easiest things. Give it to me. So the girl handed him back the stone and in a moment Amin had crushed his lump of salt against it. I don't believe it's salt, said the girl. Taste it, said Amin. It certainly tastes like salt, said the girl doubtfully. And you certainly do seem to be rather strong, but it's getting so dark that I can't be sure of anything. Come to my cave, we'll have supper, and we can both try again tomorrow. Of course, Amin didn't want to go with the ghoul, but he had to accept his invitation. They walked a long way, with Amin running to keep up to the ghoul's cave in some high cliffs. During supper, Amin boasted a good deal and made up stories about how strong he was. But the ghoul didn't know whether to believe him or not. Then the ghoul decided that he had to get rid of this young man. When they were both in bed, Amin pretended to go straight to sleep 
but really he was listening carefully waiting until the girl was asleep presently amin heard him begins to snore amin crept out of bed he found a big sack of rice and dragged it to his bed he put the bed clothes over it and hid just as dawn came the girl woke up and with a walking stick as big as a tree trunk crept over to amin's bed feeling sure that amin was sound asleep he hit the bed covers as hard as he could to make quite sure that he would hear no more of amin the girl did this seven times well pleased he went back to his own bed the girl fell asleep again and amin crept out of his hiding place he pulled away the sack of rice and lay down on the bed presently when it was lighter in the cave amin sat up and called out forgive me for waking you dear friend but there is a little insect banging about in your cave the girl woke with a start horrified to find that his visitor was still alive amin he thought really must be tough if he walks with a heavy stick felt like an insect Amin's next words frightened the girl still more. That insect gave me seven little taps. It was as if it wanted to wake me up quite gently. Speechless, the girl sprang out of bed and rushed out of the cave. Amin guessed that the girl would come back and as you know, he had nothing with which to defend himself. He began looking around the cave to find a weapon. what he found was an old gun and some small bullets the bullets would have no effect on the thick hide of the girl however this was all he could find so he took it and went and hid outside the cave soon amin saw the girl returning he was striding along with a huge club in his hand and by his side trotted a fox that clever fox will have told the girl the truth thought amin what can i do then he thought these small bullets will be enough for the fox so he aimed at the fox instead of the goal and he shouted take that fox for not obeying my orders bang when the gun and the fox fell down dead then amin came out of his hiding place and said calmly to the astonished girl i told sly fox to bring me seven goals to give to the shah and he only brings you what good is that for you are my slave already the girl was frightened and rushed away crashing through the bushes until he was just a dot on the horizon he'll never come back said amin to himself well pleased amin was now free happily he found in the cave treasures that the girl had stolen over the years amin took enough to make him rich for the rest of his life The coal. Coal is a demon associated with graveyards and consumes human flesh. In modern fiction, the term has often been used for a certain kind of undead monster. The natural shape of these monsters is horrible. These creatures are timid, extremely stupid, and always imposed by artful men. Now let's see what happens in the story with the illustrations. When it gets dark, the coal encounters Amin. The coal asks, "Where are you going?" Amin replies, "I'm very strong, and so I thought I would go out into the world to find a girl who is as strong as I am." The coal says, "Ha! Huh, you don't look very strong." Amin says, "Perhaps not, but then you look small for a girl." Amin applied the first way to fool the demon. He took a stone and told her there are liquids inside the stone. Meanwhile, he got the egg out of his pocket and put it in his hand instead of stone. The foolish demon couldn't see in the darkness. When Amin broke the stone, the egg in fact, Kul was surprised to see that something is flowing down from between his fingers. Amin claims There is liquid inside this stone. I can hear it. The girl replies, "It's impossible." 
Amin played his second trick. He took another stone, then asked the girl to crush it. It fell, then Amin had crushed the stone, actually the lump of salt, with his hands. Here we can see Amin says, This one is full of salt. Just crumble it between your fingers. And the girl replies, I don't believe it's salt. When the monster failed to break the stone once again, Amin said, how strange, you can do the easiest things. Then the monster said, It certainly tastes like salt and you certainly do seem to be rather strong. The demon thought Amin was sleeping. He hid on the bed with one of his walking stick, which was as big as a tree trunk. He hit as hard as he could seven times. He was pretty sure that Amin was no more. He came back to his bed with pleasure. In the morning, Amin once again fooled the cool, claiming that an insect gave me seven little taps. The horrified coal jumped out of bed and went out of the cave hurriedly. The coal was coming back and by his side trotted a fox. Amin applied his final trick to fool the demon. He shouted to get that fox away for not obeying his orders. He added, I asked the fox to bring seven coals and he only brings you, who is my slave already. Amin shot the fox and it fell down dead. The ghoul was frightened and fled away forever. In short, Amin sets out to get work, taking a raw egg and a lump of salt only. When it gets dark, an ugly ghoul encounters him. Amin has nothing more but the egg, salt and his wit to befool the demon. The ghoul asks him that, where is he going? He replies, he is going to find a ghoul who is strong like him. The ghoul laughs and says that, you don't look so strong. Amin says that, you are small in front of a ghoul then. Amin starts to befool the enormous ghoul. He takes a stone and claims there is liquid inside. The ghoul tries to break the stone and fails. Amin manages to get out the egg in darkness. He crushes the egg instead of stone and shows the liquid. Amin continues befooling the ghoul. He takes another stone and claims there is salt inside. The ghoul refuses to believe. He again pretends to break the stone and shows him the salt which he puts in his pocket before starting his journey. The demon invites Amin to his cave. After having supper, they both go to sleep. When the ghoul starts snoring, Amin gets up, finds a sack of rice and puts it on his bed. Then the ghoul gets up thinking that Amin is sleeping. He hits on Amin's bed for seven times with a giant stick. Amin uses his wit for the third time, telling the ghoul that an insect taps him in night. The ghoul goes out of the cave as he knows he himself hits Amin with his huge stick seven times in the night. Amin begins to look around the cave and finds an old gun and some bullets. After a while, when the ghoul comes back with a fox, Amin applies his last trick. He shouts to get away the fox for not obeying his orders. He shoots the fox and it falls dead. He claims that he asks the fox to bring him seven ghouls but it takes him who is his slave already. Moral of the story is, size does no matter. Intelligence is stronger. My dear students, hope you all have understood the story well. If you haven't understood yet, please watch the video again. See the illustrations, read the speech bubbles and try to understand the story along with the moral using your intelligence. See you in the next video. Till then, fiya manila.